the world's richest man has some advice for Hollywood liberals. Lighten up. In an interview with this satirical website, The Babylon Bee, Elon Musk said this. A lot of people on the left have no sense of humor. They, they're not funny. Um, and if, if, there, if there are so many no-fly zones, you know, um, that you have, to, you, you have to avoid all the time, then it, there's nothing left to make, to have fun about. The way I see it, treating any subject as if it's too sacred to joke about is not only killing comedy, but it's killing everything. Joining Fox News Saturday night is the former lead guitarist for Mumford & Sons, Winston Marshall. Hi, Winston. Hi, Kat. Thanks for having me. Of course. So for me, this issue, you know, it isn't really political. I just think that all this censorship stuff, they say it's to be sensitive, but I think it really drives people apart. What say you? Well, I, I should start by saying, uh, uh, commenting on, on Elon Musk's uh, uh, interview of the Babylon Bee. Well, firstly, uh, he's quite accomplished as a comedian himself. I mean, apart from the interplanetary exploration and digging tunnels under Los Angeles and, and uh, all the various, I mean, uh, uh, revolutionizing the motor industry, all the various things, he's as cheap poster. He's also got metrics and numbers on Twitter that put most comedians to shame. So it's pretty impressive. But I'd have to challenge one thing he said in that interview, which is that um, the, the left uh, uh, aren't funny. Uh, well, I, if you look at the, the who I consider anyway, and I think are the most successful comedians in the, in, in the world right now, people like Dave Chappelle, Ricky Gervais, Bill Burr, uh, Joe Rogan. You couldn't possibly say these were conservative people. These are these are progressives, and right. and what it is, I think, is more that there are two types of comedians, not leftists and rightists, but there are comedians who have the courage to make fun of the sacred cows, and there are, there are the comedians who are cowards and 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 are too terrified to even tread near them. Yeah, I complete I completely agree with you there. I think it's more about how you treat subjects than it is about politics. Uh, you you went through quite a bit of yourself because you said you liked a book, right? You want to tell me about that a little bit? Yeah, that's right. It was about two years ago now, but I tweeted about a book uh, by the American conservative journalist Andy No, documenting far left extremism and the BLM riots and Antifa uh, through uh, 2020. And uh, to my not many, very many followers, it somehow <laughs> I can laugh about it now. It was quite a painful experience because my, my world sort of blew up, but it blew up over uh, the course of a, a couple of days and, and um, uh, my, my sort of life seemed to fall apart, although I, I'm uh, uh, happy to say I have rebuilt it now. and, and uh, and doing exciting things, including, and I'll plug my podcast, Martial Matters, with The Spectator, which uh, your viewers, I hope, will enjoy, because, as well as Antifa, which is one of those sacred cows, I explore other other taboo topics, because I think it's important that, that we do. And, and Kat, I understand in your book, you do quite exactly that, which yes. I'm excited to read it. Thank you. Yeah. I think that you can make these topics so much scarier by refusing to talk about the sensitive ones. I, I'm sure you never expected that, you know, this kind of that kind of backlash at that time. And what do you think we do to stop this sort of thing where one little tweet or saying you like one little thing could be enough to completely change someone's life as you've lived? It's such a weird thing that's happened. I mean, in 1989, Ice-T put out a, a song called Freedom of Speech, and he was, he was then arguing against Tipper Gore and, and the majoritarian Christian right uh, who wanted to censor their voices and, I, I guess, their the, the, the swearing or whatever it was. And, and we've turned now where the censoriousness comes from the progressives, I think. And the only real way to deal with it is to not be scared, not to not apologize when you've done nothing wrong, to, to not be scared of the mob, and, uh, and to stand your ground, stand by your convictions. And I think we've come to a critical mass where people stand up to the bullies, we'll get through it. Unfortunately, I still, and I, 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 I get this almost daily, I get messages uh, from people saying, thank you for speaking, because I can't speak at my work. I, I often hear from musicians and, and other artists who, who have to keep zip in interviews and not really expressing themselves, because they've got too much to lose. They're, they're too nervous to, to, to rock right. the boat of their businesses. And, and, and that's somewhat understandable if they've got families and mortgages to 
to, to, to uphold and, and keep together. Life's complicated, and, and, and careers, music careers are very f difficult. And, you know, everyone yeah. wants to be a, a rock star and musician. Very I, few people get to do it. So I can understand why people want to protect I, I that. Totally, I totally agree with if, you. If, if you're an artist, your responsibility is to telling the truth, and it's the pursuit of truth. Whether you're a comedian or a musician or an author, you have to commit to telling yes. the truth as you see it. That's the only, that's our responsibility. I absolutely agree. Thank you so much, Winston, for joining me. I completely agree with that. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.